I thought I would give a late review on this movie for a couple reasons. Not the least of which is that the theme of fathers and sons kind of permeates throughout the entire Rocky franchise. Well, good timing because as some of you saw on Facebook or my Twitter feed, this is Mr. Killian or Baby Real School as he'll be known from now on, at least on this channel. So what a great way to introduce a film that talks about fathers and sons and passing the torch to a new generation. So that's it. No quips, no stupid jokes. Except the fact that he'll probably look back on these when he's a teenager and see what an idiot his father was. Circle of life. So it's been almost a decade since the last Rocky film. And because of the success of the last one, Rocky Balboa, Stallone made Rambo. And because of the success of Rambo, Stallone thought it would be okay to make The Expendables. So thanks Rocky Balboa. Which is too bad it went down that road because Rocky Balboa was a great self-aware meta film. It was Stallone writing a love letter to his younger self asking, do I have one more in me? And it's no coincidence that Rocky within that film asks the same question. I was very happy to see that Creed actually follows the example of Art Imitates Life, as this is the first film within the Rocky franchise where Stallone didn't write the script. He literally passed the torch not only to Creed, but to writer-director Ryan Coogler. Which is why this is only one reason it's called Creed and not Rocky V.I.I. -I. It's too many Roman numerals. I actually really love that this is not a Rocky film. Adonis Creed Johnson, yes, his last name is Johnson, is in every way the main character. And Michael B. Jordan gives an amazing performance that you really connect to. Which couldn't have been easy because Adonis could have easily been a character that you don't connect to. He's not your typical Rocky story. He's not the underdog. He doesn't go rags to riches. In fact, he even has the athletic pedigree, and yet we still cheer for him. But it's because Jordan and Kugler actually create a real character. Adonis, even with the pedigree, even when being adopted into a wealthy family, still has real problems that we can connect with, especially when it comes to the relationship with his dead father. He wants to prove himself, make it on his own, and really make a name for himself without using his dad's famous last name. And who can't relate to that? Any of the Bush sons? And while Adonis might have some of the trademark Creed swagger, he's not as cocky as his father. Creating this kind of character actually works for a few reasons. Not only does it create a new character, but he's also not 70s over-the-top sports movie archetype. And at the same time, he separates himself from Carl Weathers. Don't get me wrong, Carl Weathers has his place in cinematic history, and he's made some great iconic films like Rocky, Predator, and even Happy Gilmore. But the fact is, I heard that he he actually wanted to make another appearance in Creed. And we're not talking about flashbacks either, no, no. He wanted to appear as Apollo Creed in the present. Forgetting the fact, his character died. So my question is, when did Carl Weathers become Carl Weathers from Arrested Development? With Jordan's Creed showing so much potential, it's reported that three Creed sequels are already in the works, and I personally cannot wait to see more of Jordan's performance and that character. While we wait, Michael B. Jordan is Creed's for the win. Creed's lead wasn't the only casting need, but believe it or not, the rest of the cast was actually just as solid. Most notably, Tessa Thompson as Bianca, Adonis's love interest. And yet, she was more than just a plot device. She too had a backstory, wants and dreams. It was also great to see 80s mom Felicia Rashad as Mary Ann, Creed's widow from the previous films, the one who takes in Adonis. Coogler, a rather inexperienced writer-director, actually created a family full of characters, each and every one of them, who have a rich and believable connection to the main character. Of course, it wouldn't be part of the Rocky franchise if it didn't feature the Italian Stallion, and I was very pleased to see that, once again, Stallone can easily slip into the next evolution of the Rocky character. Stallone has had a tough history when it comes to the theme of fathers and sons. In Rocky Balboa, Robert Jr. is played by Milo Ventimiglia, who, much like the character, just never seems to want to return. Heroes just isn't the same without Peter, and what, is he too busy? That was preceded by Rocky V, where Rocky actually has difficulty with his biological son, played by Stallone's biological son, Sage Stallone. And in the end of the movie, he beats his surrogate son, Tommy, into a bloody pulp in the middle of the street. All kidding aside, the tragedy of Sage Stallone's death, I feel greatly influenced Stallone's performance. You really feel the connection between he and Jordan, and he really slips into that father figure role very well. Not only that, but I really felt that Coogler 
gave Rocky some brilliantly written words of wisdom. But as I mentioned, Stallone really passed the torch and it seems like he did it at the right moment with the right filmmaker and with such grace. And I'm really glad that he helped make this a new franchise for a new generation. Instead of being some meathead boxer who spawns sequel after sequel, naming it after himself over and over, I just realized we're talking about George Foreman. The real prize fighter in this situation, or the real underdog, is Kugler himself, and I was thoroughly impressed with the style he gave this film. He carefully chose how to shoot every single scene in this film, especially the fight scenes. Including the first boxing match, which was actually done in one continuous shot. Most importantly, as I mentioned before, with Rocky's character, the writing was super Superb. It paid tribute to the classic canon of these 70s era sports movies, but pushed them into the 21st century. I'm not actually a huge fan of the Rocky franchise, but Creed was surprisingly one of my favorite films this year, and it's definitely an earn it. Poll question, seems like an easy one. What is your favorite boxing movie? As always, leave your answers in the comment section below. Be sure to subscribe to Real School, follow me on Twitter, and of course, if you get anything out of Real School, you can always give a little back. or contribute to Killian's college fund. Just click the link and you can become a real school patron. But until next time, school's out. Yeah.